Hello and welcome to this iMesh video. So today I'm just going to be talking about eCycles 2021 because we've done a little, little bit of a collaboration with them and I was able to get my hands on it and give it a try and I made this huge scene um, which has an insane amount of trees, grass and lights and everything. So I just wanted to really push it to the max and um, yeah, try out some new features such as the incredibly fast viewport and everything. So. Um, if you're considering eCycles or not sure what eCycles is, then uh, I guess watch this video and you'll be able to see see what you think. Okay, so let's have a look at the time difference and the speed it takes to render. So this is eCycles and it rendered in four minutes and five seconds. Uh, and I render, and then I just opened the exact same scene in Cycles and that rendered in nine minutes and six seconds. So that's a huge improvement in render time. Um, so and there's no real difference as well. I think there's some very slight differences, but I think that's actually the denoiser working a little bit differently. But generally, the scene is exactly the same, but for over half the time, less than half the time it takes to render. Um, so I did a little bit quick calculation here. So if you have an animation which is a thousand frames and it takes nine minutes to render, then that is 150 hours of render time. Uh, whereas if you render in e-cycles, uh, 4,000 minutes for four minutes per frame for a thousand frames, uh, that is only 66 hours of render time. So you, might, you can imagine if you have a client and they expect lots of renders regularly, um, then this will pay for itself very quickly because it does come at a cost. Um, I think it's about 300 euros. But we actually have an offer that if you purchase iMesh, uh, then you'll also get 20% off with eCycles for the pre-order for 2021. Uh, that will go down to 10% soon. Yeah, I think one of the biggest problems I found with cycles was the render time. For an interior scene, I found that usually it was just not quite manageable if you had lots of renders. Um, but to have half the render time uh, for e-cycles is just incredible. It means that I can save more time and increase the resolution if I wanted to increase the samples and get higher higher quality images. Um, or even in, in a lot of scenes, I also bump this up right to the max, 128 um light paths and, and set it to the maximum settings because I can, because it, it has saved so much time that I can afford to go the extra mile and produce much more high quality images. Okay, so this is a direct comparison between the viewports of a normal Blender and eCycles, which is on the right. So normal Blender on the left, you'll notice that it's much more sluggish and slower to react to what I'm trying to view. So if I try to view this elephant, you have to, you know, it feels a lot more slower and jolty. Comparing that to on the right, no matter what movement I make, it kind of refreshes instantly. So if I move the mouse and I try to focus on something else, it reacts straight away. So it's much more fluid and easier to kind of line up shots. Uh, so there's kind of no delay between um, moving the scene around and getting the reaction you want. Uh, if we compare that to on the left, you'll notice that if I try to align any kind of object to be in the viewport, it's, it's just very slowly just trying to get to what it where you where you want it to be. So you can imagine that for lining up cameras or anything, uh, the viewport on the right is just way quicker and easier to do this. Um, it's just night and day really. Okay, so one of the things which I find really cool is the new SSAA or the Super Sampling Anti-Aliasing. And by default it's set to one, but if you send it, set it to something like four, what it can do is create a much sharper image and the denoiser does a much better job at denoising the image. So if I go a bit closer into something like this Pampas, so I've just done a, a render preview earlier and just did a screenshot of both of them and then overlaid so we can compare the difference. This is it with it turned off and this is it with it turned on. And you can see here the detail in like the hair or the Pampas is much more defined. You can actually see what see what it is. Whereas if you turn it off, some of the, lots of the detail is just kind of lost. Uh, but this is yeah much, much better. So if you have a, a scene and you want to do some quick previews to show your client, uh, turn on the super, sa super sampling anti-aliasing and then you'll be able to whack out much higher resolution uh, previews for them or if you just want to have a much better experience. And I know he's also optimized this a lot as well so that the scene is, uh, when you're flying through, it's very responsive. Okay, so this next feature is actually light groups and you can there's an automatic button, you can click light groups and what it does is it gets all the lights that are inside a collection and puts them all together. Um, so I have light suns here and I've got um, lights and then I've got suns and I've also got some other collections with lights inside so they are put into their own collections too. Um, and then once I've gone into a render preview, I then just go to here 
and make sure that the render pass is set to um, light groups and then what you can see is the light groups pass and this is incredibly powerful so what, one of the main reasons why I moved to Corona render was because of light mix where you can easily adjust the values of the lights without having to re-render every single time and I honestly think that this panel kind of makes this a little bit easier to work with than the Corona render the fact that I can do the uh, the render preview inside of Blender without having to use a standalone piece of software and then just have this panel on the right hand side which we can then change and it's instant. This has blew my mind. E ever since I've been using Corona Render I've always wanted this feature for cycles because the creative freedom that you have without having to re-render, re-render, re-render you could just quickly adjust all the lights that you like. Um, so I'm just going to set these all to zero and you can just see what just the world looks like. Um, so I'm just going to go through, I'm going to see what I can create with this and see if I can make something looking quite fun. Okay, so that is that. I think you kind of get the idea. You can completely push everything. You can change the, the whole feel of this image in seconds, basically. And you can imagine uh, doing re-renders and setting this to one, setting this to two, setting this to three, and then do a re-render every time, changing the light, and keep changing the lights and all the colors. And then you're like, no, I'm not too sure. And you could just spend hours on this, whereas you saw how quick it was for me just to quickly change the mood in seconds, you know. Um, so you can, you can focus in on one object, um, if you wanted to and you can also see like how this light is affecting that particular part and you can concentrate on certain lights just to see if that light is acting how you were expecting that light to be acting um, honestly I think this is probably one of the best features that has been released in ages I know eCycles is incredibly fast but this alone and the creative freedom that it gives you is just incredible um, yeah nothing more to say this is just a beautiful piece of work. Okay, so one panel that I really love here and it's one I use most often is this one here. So what I do is I usually set it to very fast and then for when I want to do a final render I put it to high quality because physically accurate is usually just a debugging mode. A lot of problems that people might have with cycles is that you know there's so many settings you just don't know what would change the impact of the render um, the most and um, why is it slow or how do I speed it up and this panel just does everything for you so if I set that to physically correct um, it changes all the light bounces to be 128, sets high minimum light bounces and has zero clamping, for example. And the viewport preview is set to very fast with the new SSAA and along with the new viewport, especially in uh, eCycles 2021, you end up with a stupidly fast viewport. Um, you can just really fly around the scene and you can set up all your cameras and it's just like, it's just like an EV experience. Um, so you can just move around, you can get all the details. So go over here to, to this cabinet and and you can set up the camera how you want it to be set up or even go outside and and fly around let's go let's go over to this bush here and there you go you can see it as it is so let's turn around and see if I can see the building There we go. So setting up frames now in eCycles is stupidly fast and it does remind me a lot about Eevee. So yeah, that uh, blew me away and I really don't think I'm going to go back. I found that I actually never really used Optics Viewport because I always found that it made the image look uh, washed out or like a painting. But because it's so fast now, 
and these settings allow me to find a very quick settings quickly. Um, I can do very fast previews. Okay, so let's talk about window glass now. So in an old shader, we'd probably set up something a bit like this, which is a bit of a hack to make sure that the light can come through the glass properly um, and we don't really change anything here, but you can do. Um, in the new one, what we do is just have a very simple glass shader set to transmission uh, all the way across and roughness to zero. But what we do is in the object properties, only show it to the camera and also the transmission. Um, so if you're importing an old, old object into the scene, such as an old window glass, um, just make sure you tick this box here. Um, if you're actually using the new glass shader, then you wanna have this unticked. Uh, but I'll show you a render comparison because it actually is much quicker um, with the new method. So I'll, I'll do the old method for now. So let's just do a quick preview. Okay, so that one is now finished. This is the old glass shader. So you can see here uh, the reflection of the curtain in the, in the window and that's perfect. So now let's just go to slot two and we'll just show you what it looks like with the new glass shader. So this is the new one, just a simple glass shader and we're gonna turn off transparent shadows. And like I said, we'll just make sure that the ray visibility is just these two. So we'll just press F12 and see what we get. Okay, perfect. So this one finished in one minute and previous version finished in one minute and 30 seconds. I actually found an increase of about 30% usually, uh, depending on the scene. Some, some scenes increase the speed by about 10%, obviously depending on how complex the scene is. But um, you can see here, so this is the old version and this is the new version. So also there's more detail and there's less noise in the scene and the denoiser has done a much better job here. Uh, so you can see a lot of the detail is, is missing. Uh, compared to the new version. The new version is a little bit darker, um, but that is, that's easy to fix. We'll just make sure the light's a bit lighter or adjust the exposure. But you can see there's also still the reflections of the curtain in the, in the window, just like the previous version. It's a little bit more different, but apparently this way, the new method is a little bit more physically accurate and it's just much faster. So try to make sure that if you have window glass, set it up like this. Okay, so a new amazing feature is the new AI denoiser. And when you click on create, it creates these nodes for you here. Uh, I've actually just put it into a group um, to keep it all together. Uh, but what that does is it allows it to denoise much more accurately. So we can see over here, so um, currently we have the old denoising node plugged in there. Um, and you can kind of see the wood grain, but it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, but if I was to plug in the AI denoiser from eCycles, put it in here, you'll be able to see that the wood becomes much more obvious and that there's much more detail uh, kept rather than the old denoiser. So what this will allow you to do is render at less samples and get a much, much more accurate um, representation. So, um, so, yeah. so yeah, that is pretty incredible. I'll be using this, I think, in all of my renders. Okay, so what I'm showing you now is not actually eCycle specific, and but it's something I did a lot in this previous scene, and that was doing Alt D for all of my objects, um, which usually works fine because you're you're making an object instance of the data, so the object not only need to be calculated once, but that is a problem because if there is a modifier applied to all of these objects, the modifier is applied separately to every single object, which means that you can end up using quite a lot more RAM than you actually need. And you can see here, we'll use about 2000 megabytes of RAM, 2400 megabytes of RAM, which is quite a lot. But if you're using the asset manager and you append an object in, usually it will append with a collection already. So if we have a look here, if we uh, go back, you'll see that there is already an object collection called OC002 straw weave. But what we can do is do shift A and do collection instance. And then you can see here, we're now making an, a collection instance. And what that will do is it will only calculate the modifier once. And you can see here, I've made a lot more chairs, but the RAM usage is currently at 400 megabytes, which is so much less. Uh, so I've done that for all of my trees, all of my chairs and every single object that is a duplicate. I've done this to save a lot of RAM in the scene. Um, so you can see the comparison between the two. Um, yeah, I actually didn't know that that was the case. I thought that if you do an object instance with Alt D, it just does what you'd think it would do with the collection instance. So yeah, if you're gonna make a duplicate, just do a collection instance instead. 
So a couple more optimizations that I made were, for example, in the trees, I set them all to bounding boxes as well as all the grass, because I found that I was using the Lodify to go from a low poly mesh to a high poly mesh during render, but the time it took to actually convert over to the high poly mesh was actually taken too long. And I don't need to see a low poly example of the, of the tree for this particular scene, I just want to completely cover the whole scene with trees. Uh, so I just made them a bounding box and then I just duplicated them because then it cre creates a, a nice fluid viewport. Another little optimization that I did was in a lot of my glass, I had some volumes plugged in um, or some more complex glass shaders. But because this is going to be an animation, I try to make sure that all my glass shaders were as simple as possible. I just replaced them with some normal transmission shaders just to make it completely as simplified as possible. Um, and that helped speed up my scene a lot. Okay, so since working with eCycles, I think that the piece of software is incredible. I think what you get for the money is incredibly worth the value. But we can't forget that the support that is also available with eCycles is incredible. So if you're a newcomer, you're not too sure how something is working or if something, if you think something is broken, then you can do totally reach out and maybe you'll even learn something too because I, I've also learned a ton from working with him. Um, he's a very knowledgeable guy. So I'm sure if you have any questions, uh, just shoot them in that direction. Okay, so I've had a lot of people asking me if this scene is gonna be available for iMesh exclusive along with the other scenes which are available. And I would say tentatively, yes. Uh, but the problem is that I use a few textures which are from other websites, which so I'll have to replace those with uh, our own or some other CCO textures. Um, but the problem is that this scene is also very, very heavy. Um, I was using about 22 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm not sure if a lot of people will be able to render this, but I might do a light version or see see what I can do, see if I can optimize it even further so other people can also render it. But in essence, I do want to upload this scene to iMesh. Take a little bit more work. There are also some models in here which are not actually uploaded to iMesh just yet. So I don't know if I'll upload those first and then this scene, but we'll see. Uh, but that's kind of it for today. I think eCycles as is an incredible piece of software. I think the guy who wrote it is an absolute genius. And yeah, if, if you like this kind of video, um, then let me know and please subscribe. I think it really helps this channel get seen. And yeah, thank you for watching.